I'm Colleen and I teach preschool at a Head Start program. My assistants, Kelly, Liz, and I have 18 children in our classroom, ages three to five. When we move it close to the light, look at the shadow. It, 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 it goes big and big and big. When I explore science with my kids, it's easy to get caught up in the activity and forget to document what we're doing. But by drawing pictures, writing things down, and taking photographs, we have something concrete to look back on and remember what we did. How do they make that shadow monster? By everybody lifting their arms, because I could tell, because I see somebody's head right there. This helps the kids reflect on and make sense of what they have learned. Who sees their shadow? We're going to trace our shadows with this chalk. One of the first ways we documented our shadow investigation was by going outside in groups and making tracings of our shadows. Wow, you're doing a good job. All right, I'm going to trace yours. As we made the tracings, we also documented our observations. My arms are on my side. Uh, oh, are you going to trace the flagpole shadow? And we made note of other shadows in our courtyard, especially the flagpole. As the sun moved across the sky, we used the tracings to track how the shadows changed positions. Where's the shadow now? Now it's right there. Did it move? Well, let's trace the shadow now. Christine, when we first came to trace the flagpole, it was right here. And the next time we looked at the flagpole, it was right here. Where's the shadow now? Right there. I wonder why. Maybe the sun. The sun? Oh, yay, the sunshine is out. Later in the day, we were able to go back outside and see if things had changed even more. Where's the shadow of the flagpole now? Are you looking for the shadow? There. The, what? The shadow is way over here now? Well, we got to trace it. Here you go, Christine. The change was dramatic. And it wouldn't have been obvious if we hadn't taken the time to document our observations of the shadows and reflect on what happened. How did the shadow move way over here? Maybe it moved because of the clouds. Oh, the clouds made it go away. It's the sun that made the, the shadow. The sun moving over here. So now I'm going to trace the shadow in one hand. I'm gonna... Inside at our centers, we continue to trace shadows on paper. There is our shadow tracing. I have an idea. Can we see if the shadow, if this dot, if, the, if what you draw, if we can make a shadow like this? You want to see if we lift the whole paper up, if it will make a shadow? What do you think the shadow is going to look like? What do you? Man, I think it's going to look like a star. What do you predict a shadow is going to look like? A starfish. All right, so. Is it a star shadow? It looks like on the table because it, it's coming right there. Uh, oh yeah, because it, this is the paper, that's why. Oh, it has the outline of the paper? Yeah. I'm going to rotate it. We then documented how many different shadows a starfish can make. Whoa, that's a starfish shadow too. Who did this drawing with me yesterday? Which allowed us to share our discoveries with the whole group later. Where did we put the starfish? In front of the light. And it made what? The shadow. Look at our shadow museum. We also used our photographs, written observations, and drawings to create a shadow museum, which allowed for more reflection and thought. The shadow moved. We traced. Documenting and reflecting on our work really helps the children as they try to make sense of the world around them. I see how much the children enjoy the process and how it deepens their understanding. And now, it's an important part of our science exploration together.